Hi everyone, this is Rainy Howard and I am so excited about this message, this miraculous moment today. It's all about the only true way to create a vision board. Now, before I get all into it, I just want to say there's a lot of people out here who are training people um, on how to create their own vision board. Um, I've even seen people on, you know, national television, Dr. Oz show. It's been people all over the internet, all over, you know, YouTube and different blogs. But there are a lot of life coaches who are out here teaching people how to create these vision boards. And many of these vision boards um, lack substance. They're not useless. They're not really in line with the word of God and with how we are created and designed by God and, and how we should go about um, recording visions and, and, re and having a vision. So I'm going to go into it because really with me, I'm a firm believer in, um, in having a vision from God and, and writing things down and, and recording things and, and um, planning and all of that. I'm a believer in all of that. And I've created many vision boards. Well, I, I probably created about three or four. And I can say that. I wasn't always creating the vision board with the right motive and I didn't have the knowledge and information that I have now. And so just with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and us tapping into this miraculous moment, you are going to learn the only and true way to create a vision board. And it's biblical. Is biblically, is is it's in the Bible, it's based off scripture, and I'm gonna lead you and guide you in the steps and all of that, and really give you an understanding of what you're doing, just to make sure that what you're doing is in decency, is in order, is in the line in an in an alignment with God, and we are working and walking in partnership with Him. We are not doing anything in ourselves or with or just of ourselves. But we know that we need the Holy Spirit. We need God. We need his guidance. We need his word to direct our path. So I'm super excited about this word. I'm going to go ahead and get into our opening prayer. And then we're going to get right into it. So wherever you are, I just pray that you would um, let this atmosphere, let this miraculous moment just pour into your life. Just come expecting to receive. Come expecting to hear the voice of God, to be led by the Holy Spirit. So let's get into it. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and we're going to pray. Father God, have your way in this miraculous moment. Open our spiritual eyes to see and our spiritual ears to hear your will and purpose for each and every person listening and watching right now, Lord. God, I thank you for them. I thank you for this opportunity. Use me to deliver your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I'm going to share seven wisdoms, world, wisdoms of God, seven tips that are going to help you create the only true vision board, the only true way of creating a vision board. So. The first tip, first of all, before you create a vision board, because you, you have to set up, you can't just say, oh, let me go get a board and get this and get that and, and now I'm going to create a vision board. No, that's, no, no. And many people think, okay, well, I just need to figure out what it is I want in life and then I can just go ahead and, and you know, find pictures and, and put that on there and that's it. No. The first thing you need to do is first and foremost, you need to receive a vision from God. You need to receive a vision from God. The Bible talks about God knowing us before we were conceived. In Jeremiah 1 5, he said, Before I formed you, you before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
So the reason why you have to first and foremost receive a vision for, from God is because God is your creator. He knows you. He designed you. He know exactly what, what it is that you are supposed to do. He has a, a divine purpose for your life. And whenever you get direction, whenever you, you're getting ready to start anything, whether it's a project, a ministry, a book, um, a marriage, whatever it is that, that you're getting ready to, you know, go into, into your life. You need to first and foremost, you need to receive a vision from God. God is our source. He is our source. Abba Father, Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knows exactly what it is you are supposed to be doing in your life. He knows exactly what it is that you should be envisioning in your life. So you want to make sure that you receive a vision from God, that your revision, that your vision comes from him and not man, that it's not coming from something you just pulled out the sky and you just thought, oh, I, I think I want to do this. I think I want to do that or go here. Or Somebody told me I should do this. So maybe I'll put this on my vision board. No. What has God shown you? What, where, where has he um, given you vision? Where, what, what has he shown you in your life? So you want to tap into knowing and receiving the vision first and foremost from God. There are people who teach others out here. Now you're going to see, uh, like I said, a lot of life coaches, a lot of people going around having vision board parties and teaching people, but they're not teaching the right way. They're not teaching biblically based off the word of God. So there are people out here that are teaching others to create their own life, create their own life, design their own life, or, or basically be God in your life. And by thinking about your life and what you want and to find pictures that look like the life you envision, and then you create your vision board. That's not how you do it. That is not the correct way to create a vision board. You don't just wake up and say, oh, I think I want this life. So I'm going to grab all of these pictures and this is what I'm going to get. No. Have you ever, have you seen some of the shows have you seen on American Idol when you have people out there and they believe in their mind that they are supposed to be um, professional singers. They believe in their mind that they're supposed to be this famous superstar. But then when they get on stage, when they get in front of the judges, they sound crazy like crap like who told you you should audition as a singer that is not your calling that is not what you are created to do and we all can see that you're not created to do it because you're not gifted and blessed in this area so there are people that are going around teaching that whatever you want whatever the life you think you can have you go and you find pictures that look like that and you put it on a board and then you believe and you're going to receive that type of life. So you have people out here creating these vision boards and they have Oprah on their vision board. They have Beyonce. They have Michelle and Barack. And you're like, what does this mean? What are all these people mean? These are people that you've never met that, I mean, is this your vision that you want to meet them or what, what does this mean? Or do you want to be like them? Do you want to be a, a talk show host like Oprah? Or are you trying to be the president like Barack? What, what does this mean? And is this a vision from God or is this something that you just created yourself? So that's really not the correct way to create a vision board. Before you create a vision board, you need to humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourself that you may be exalted. The world teaches us if we exalt ourselves, if we promote ourselves, then we'll be successful. But the Bible is totally opposite of that. The Bible teaches that if you humble yourself under God because you 
are and you're a creation. God created you. He's the creator. So you humble yourself under in submission to the creator and whatever it is he has caused you to do whatever it is he is leading you to do and you yield yourself to his vision his purpose and what it is that he has for you because he created and designed you for a specific purpose and the purpose that he has for your life once you receive that once you get that some of you think Oh, I don't know. Well, what if I don't like the purpose that God has for me? Let me tell you something. The Bible says when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. So what that means is the more you you delight in God, the more you come to him and worship in prayer, the more you come to him and seeking and listening to what he has. There are people that are running to false prophets. They're running to psychics and, and palm readers and all of these people because they're looking for answers. They're looking for direction. They're looking for purpose. They're looking for a prophetic divine word of God. When you, God wants to give that to you. When I tell you every morning I wake up, I say, Lord, I go into my devotional time. I say, Lord, speak to me. I'm listening. I'll just go to God and say, God, I want this. I want that. Give me this, give me that, bless me with this, amen. No, I say, God, speak to me. Lord, I want to hear from you. I want to know your direction. And there are times when I'm quiet, I'm sitting quiet in my prayer time and God will give me a word. He would just start speaking to me and I'll be, I'll write it down. Or sometimes I don't hear anything and I'll just, instead of me praying out loud, I'll just write to God in my journal. Like I'm writing a letter and I'll just pour out my heart in writing. And then I will hear the Holy Spirit speaking back and I will write as I hear what he says to me. And the words that he give me are, are direction. They are a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. They are shaping my life and teaching me and showing me where to go. And that's the only way I, I five years ago, I, I could pick up and leave my nine to five and never look back. It was only because I had divine revelation. I heard the voice of the Lord, which I knew I could obey, obey that voice. I didn't just quit, quit my job and leave because I wanted to and I was just done and I was just like, I'm good. No, I left. Because I knew God was calling me to leave. I knew that there was purpose in me leaving. I knew that he had a new season, a new level for me. And in order for me to go where he was calling me to go, I had to step away. I had to leave some things. And I feel the presence of God right now while I'm speaking. So somebody watching this video, God is speaking to you right now. God wants to show you the way to go. He don't want you to have to run to man and run to people and figure things out. God wants to show you with his word. He wants to reveal his, his way to you. And so don't go looking for things. Humble yourself. Humble yourself and come to the voice of God and say, God, I may want to do this. I feel like I need to do this. I need to go here and this is just me. But you know what, Lord, I'm going to lay down what I think I need to do. I'm going to put all that aside and I'm going to yield to you. I'm going to worship you in my life and I want you to direct my path. So before you create your vision board, humble yourself and seek God. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, I love this scripture. Woo, I get excited about it. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. Now people, I heard people say this scripture and they did not get this scripture right. <laughs> they didn't get it right. They say where there is no vision, the people perish. And some people think when you think about vision, oh, um, what do you see? What? It, no. Vision is translated to mean prophecy. Where there is no prophecy, the people perish. In the ancient days, prophets were called seers because they had a divine way of seeing things in the supernatural. 
They saw things that were coming before they came. They saw in the spiritual realm, they had a knowing, uh, a, a spirit of knowing and knowledge of God. And so when it say where there's no vision of people perish, it's when there's no prophecy. When you don't know what God is doing in your life, when you don't know where God is leading in your life, when you don't know the path that you are headed in your life, there's no direction, there's no purpose, the people perish. There's no prophecy. Do you have prophecy? Do you have a divine vision where God is taking you? I thank God for the gift, for the prophetic gift that he has given me. But there are times when God has given me a word to say to someone and I was afraid to say it. But when I just said it, they broke down in, in tears. It was nothing but the power of the Holy Spirit. And there are people around here that are hungry, they're thirsty to know what's next. What do I do next? Where do I go? I'm empty. I'm void. I lack direction. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. There are people out here saying they're just hungry and thirsty and empty for more. And God wants to give you more. So where, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, where there is no prophecy, no public preaching of God's word called prophecy. There are a lot of false preachers and teachers and prophets out here giving this watered down word. I mean, there are some big time famous people that are not delivering the true living word of God and gospel of God to convict the hearts and soul of, of the people and to feed the, the sheep. God says, feed my sheep. They are hungry. They are hungry for my word. They are hungry for direction. They are hungry for prophecy and no one is giving the word and the people are perishing. And the Bible says, really, when it says the people perish, the translation for that phrase, the people perish means they run wild. Not necessarily saying that they're just perishing, but they're running wild. People are running all over the place. They're going everywhere looking for love, seeking all of these diabolical environments and going into these relationships that are not of God, that are, are of the devil, that are demonic, and they are not called by God. And there are people out here, they're searching, they're searching, they're searching, they're searching for truth. And they're so empty and they're so hungry. Look at my message from last week, Spiritual Hunger. It's very, very good. After you watch this video, you want to hear that. And also, Chasing Premature Blessings. There are some people out here that are seeking more and they're running wild with no purpose. So people operate with no clarity, no stability, no focus. They have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. It's vital that we receive instruction and revelation from God. Instruction and revelation from God. Psalms 119, 105 says, your lamp, Lord, is a lamp. Your, your word, I'm sorry, your word, Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God, when you give me your word, when you give me your vision, when you give me your prophecy, when you give me those things, it's a lamp unto my feet. God, it gives my, it, it directs my feet. It shows me which steps to take. It makes it bright for me to know exactly where I'm supposed to go. And it's a light unto my path. God, it shows me where I'm headed. It opens up the light to the path of my direction. And I know you are calling me to go. And I have clarity. I have stability, God, when you give me the vision. So why do people create vision boards? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still on the first step, which you got to get the vision from God first. But let's let's challenge this. These, these are some of the reasons that people are creating them, because I want to make sure when you create your vision board that you are creating it under God, under his authority, under his guidance. 
and that you are creating it with the right motive. So people are creating vision boards because they want to create or accomplish something. They just want to accomplish something or create something. They want to attract or envision material wealth. So they, they want they want things. So they create a vision board because they're like, I want a man. I want to be married. I want a car. I want a Ferrari. I want a mansion. I want, you know, this big business or career or whatever. So they create because they want material things. And they create vision boards because they want to look at a visual plan. Sometimes they just want to see a plan. Another reason they create vision boards is because they want to manifest a desire or a wish. It's just something that, oh, I, I, I really want this. I really, really, really desire this and I got to have it. So let me just create this vision board so I can have it. But the problem with the, the vision board concept, the, the only problem, the problem that I see, one of the problems that I see is not the vision board in itself. It's visualizing and recording a vision of purpose according to God's will. It's because people are creating these vision boards that are not in line with the will of God for their life. They're creating these vision boards with the wrong motive because when you di dissect the scripture, write the vision and make it plain, that's not talking about just whatever vision you see, write it down. And that that's not just talking about that. That's talking about write the word of God, write the prophecy that God has given you, write it down, make it plain, make it on. And I'm going to get more into that scripture later on. But I just wanted to throw that in there because really we got to have the right motives. We got to have, we got to be in line with our creator, with almighty God who created us, almighty God of heaven and earth, who, who watches over us, who knew us before we was formed in our mother's womb. He knew us. He knew us. He knew you. He knew exactly what you were going to go through in this season. He knew exactly what your life was going to be. He knew exactly how you were going to feel. He knew exactly that you were going to watch this video and this video was going to pull something out of you and you were going to get some clarity and you were going to get some direction from this. He knew at this very moment you would be doing exactly what you're doing right now. So how can we do anything outside of God? How can we create any vision, any board, any task, project, business without him? So the number two reason or way of creating a vision board is you want to write the vision. So you first got to get the vision from God and then you got to write it down. You have to write it down first. Don't just get to finding pictures, cutting stuff out. You ain't wrote nothing down. What did God tell you? Now write it down. God said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables so that he may run who reads it. Habakkuk 2 and 2. The vision spoken in the scripture was a prophetic word from God. It was insight and knowledge that God gave to warn the people of the destruction of the Babylonian monarch monarchy. So really, if you go into detail, if you research that scripture, that scripture was talking about, he was telling him to write the vision, write the prophecy, write the word of God, write that word, that prophetic word that is going to come time ahead. Write it down so that people will see it and it'll be plain and clear that they will understand it. It won't be foreign. It won't be complicated. We're not using big, fancy words. It's, it's right on point. It's plain, it's understandable, and if you run it past, you can see it and read it, and you know exactly what it is. You know exactly what it is. So you must write the vision that God gives you. Writing is very important. It is a way to permanently record something. When you write the vision or the prophecy, the vision, the prophecy, you validate it. You validate what God has said. The vision is clarified when it is written. So first you need to, you get the vision, then you write it down. You write it down, you make it plain, you make it understandable that you can read it, you can know it. 
and, and it's there. Number three, after you write the vision, you want to make it plain. <laughs> Easy to read, understandable. He who runs may read it. Like I said, make it legible and straightforward. It should be easy to understand and read. If you're in a hurry, if you got to rush off, you running, you got to hurry up and go, you got a meeting, an appointment, you should be able to look at that vision and know exactly what it is. There are people with vision boards. They got all kind of pictures and stuff all over. And they see, like I said, they see Oprah Obama. They see all this Ferraris. And they like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What? How can you really take it in and understand it when it's a lot going on? It's not plain, It's not made plain and clear to know exactly where you're headed, exactly where you're going, exactly the word and the prophecy that God is giving you. So you got to make it plain. And then number four, you need to cover your vision in prayer and scripture. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. When God, even though God is giving you a word, God wants you to pray over that. Yeah, he said, yeah, I gave you the vision. I gave you the prophetic word and you wrote it down. Now I want you to pray because when you pray, you are you are reinforcing it and, you, and, and you're giving it to God. You're constantly giving it to God. You're not trying to figure it out on your own strength. The Bible says lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So God wants you to come to him in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. I love you. I know I see what you have for me. You show me that you are leading me and you are guiding me to to help others and to make a difference in my life. And I see my children. My children are prospering in their life and they are growing closer to you. And whatever it is, the vision you see, you write it, you make it plain and you have to pray over it and cover it with scripture. Colossians 4, 2 says, devote yourself to prayer being watchful and thankful. James 4, 3 says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasure. Mm, I love this scripture. Because there are people out here, there are people having these huge vision board conventions and huge vision board workshops and got all these thousands of people making vision boards and these people are making useless vision boards that are not that are not being effective at all because it has nothing to do with what God has called them to do and and then when they ask for something they're asking with the wrong motive they're asking with a selfish motive they're asking so that they can spend it so that they can have their own pleasures satisfied what are your motives? Are your motives right? Do you have a selfish motive? A lot of times when you get to putting all these houses and movie stars and superstars on, on a vision board or looking up to them or idolizing them, you are coveting someone else's life. And what happens when you covet someone else's life, you become jealous, you become envious, you become Uncontent, discontent with who you are and unsatisfied with just being who God created you to be. So you have to ask with the right motive when you come to God in prayer. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. And I love the scripture that says, Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Keep coming to God in prayer each and every day. Each and every day, come to him. Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your life, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will have good success. So when you, when you write your vision, when God is giving you a word, you pray over that word and you cover that word in the scriptures. You find scriptures in the Bible that confirm 
this is going to happen, Lord. I thank you, Father, that, that this is going to happen, that you are going to bless my family. You are going to protect us because your word says that, that we are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come and go. And I thank you, Lord, for your word that says your blessings are are rich and make no sorrow. God, I thank you that we're going to you are going to create us to be rich and and have no sorrow, God. I thank you for your word that says we lack no good thing, Lord. I thank you for your word that says no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and I can stand on what you told me, and I can stand on this prophetic word that you've given me and know that it's going to come to pass because you said it in your word. So you cover it with scripture. And number five, you want to create the plan. Okay. So God is giving you this prophetic word. First, you get the vision from God. Then you write the vision down. Then you make it plain and easy to understand. Then you cover it in prayer and scripture. And then you create the plan. Proverbs, you, you create the plan, the action plan. Because you know that, you know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So you can have faith. You could be praying. You could be looking at this vision. But without works is dead. You, you have to create some action now. So you create the plan. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit your work unto the Lord. Your plans will be established when you commit your work unto the Lord. And your plans will be established. Proverbs 16, 3. So when you commit everything you're doing unto the Lord, your plans will be established. Proverbs 6, I love this scripture, 6, 6 through 8. It says, go to the ant, O slugger, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, any officer, and any ruler, the ant, she don't have a boss at all. She her own boss. She an entrepreneur. So it's like consider her ways, consider how wise she is without having any boss, any ruler, any chief. She prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. So if an ant can become productive and plan for what's to come, you can too. You can create a strategy. You can create a plan. And ask God for guidance. There are times just recently. For the first time, I sat down and I said, God, okay, I'm writing my business strategy because I there are things that God show, has shown me. And he said, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. And I want you to do that. And I say, okay, God, give me a strategy. So I got in front of my computer. I prayed and I said, God, lead me to a strategy. And I asked him, lead me to a strategy on this project. What do I need to do? And God gave me and, sh and showed me exactly what I need to do. Divine strategy from God. So ask God to give you a strategy for your plan. Show you how to work it out. And number six, diligently work as unto the Lord. Now, this is important. Because the Bible talks about being diligent. And if you want to be blessed with an abundance, you have to be diligent. And everything you do, you start off and you keep going. 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 You don't stop. Even when things don't look right. Well, God, I didn't get that many people this time. That many people didn't show up to my event this time. Well, God, I don't, I'm, I'm praying for my husband, but I don't see any change. He's getting worse. God, I'm praying for my kids, but I don't see any. Okay, God, I might as well stop because I mean, I prayed for him enough. It's been a week and I ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. You, that's not what happened. That's not how things happen. Okay, God, well, I didn't start this business. I didn't put this money in it and I, I went and I tried and I was tried to sit, but but I don't see nothing coming from it. I'm just going to give up. I've had people email me. Some of you on my email list, and I might be talking to you, email me. Well, I just closed my business down. Well, I just gave up. Well, really? Was you supposed to do that? Or did you just feel like I just need it? I'm just done. Was you led by God to do that? To close down your business? 
So diligently work as unto the Lord. When you do a business, you do it for God. If you're doing it for God, there's no closing down. I got to get, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work for God. I'm not working for myself. You know, all these people going around, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner. I own this. I own that. If you die tomorrow, you will have none of that. We are stewards. We have to understand who we are in Christ. We are managing whatever God gives you. If he gives you a business, if he gives you a mansion, if he gives you children, if he gives you a husband, you are a steward, a manager of what he has given you. You don't own any of it. So if you are working as unto the Lord, who tell, if God didn't tell you to close it down, God didn't tell you to leave that man, if God didn't tell you to divorce, if God didn't tell you to, to pick up and leave your house and your family, you shouldn't be doing it. Proverbs 21.5 said, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to pro pro poverty. So it's, if you're diligent, if you're consistent, even in the hard times and you sticking through it, it's going to lead you to abundance. Yeah, when I first got married, I had my issues. We argue, we fight, we fuss, we had this, that. The first, I say the first three years is it's, it's, it's the toughest. <laughs> Once you get through that lump and hump, and it's been, it's going on 13 years now since we've been married. We got married when we were 20 and 21. We were young. All the odds were against us. And we could have easily given up. We could have easily thrown in the towel and said, I'm done. But when you are diligent, God is going to bless that. God is going to bless it with abundance. Everyone who is hasty comes only into poverty. When you quick to get something, get rich quick, quick to do some things and things not working out, it leads to poverty. So be diligent. And last but not least, the final number seven, all of these steps is you just repeat it. Number seven is repeat. Repeat everything that you have read in this plan. Hebrews 10, 36 says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. You persevere, you hold on, you keep going, you do, you do the steps, you follow it over and over again. So this is the real, this is the only true way to create a vision board. Anybody else you can read, they can tell you to do this, do that. This is the only true way through God, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit to create a vision board. Number one, you receive your vision from God. Number two, you write the vision. Number three, you make it plain and easy to read. Number four, you cover it in prayer and scripture. Number five, you create the plan. Number six, you diligently work, work that vision, work that plan. And then you repeat it. You press, you persevere, you continue, you endure, you continue to repeat it over and over again. And don't stop at one vision board. After a season, God's going to give you a new vision. He's going to show you some new things and you create a new vision board and you follow the steps over and over again. So here's my thing and I'm getting ready to close. What I want to do is I want to set up a group of women. I want to create a seven day vision blessing board challenge that's what i'm i'm really looking into doing the vision blessing board and so the vision blessing board challenge is i'm going to get some women together and we're going to hey ladies if we you want to do this we're going to be sold out for it. it's going to be seven days and we're going to take each of the seven steps and we're going to work our vision out of course, the first step, receiving the vision from God, we're going to just go into how to hear from God and really get a word from the Lord. And, and I don't know how God may lead me. He may lead me to give a prophetic word. I don't know how he's going to do it. But whatever it is, we're going to flow in this and we're going to get a vision because we're, we're coming up um, on the next, the next year. It's around the corner and a lot of people want to create visions and all of these things. So I want to make sure that you're on board for the next year and you have a good plan step ahead of you. So if you want to do my seven day vision board challenge, I need you to just email me. I'll have a link. Um, you can go to 
contact at rainyhoward.com or reply to the email. If you get my emails, if you're just seeing this video on YouTube, click my link, go to my website, um, or you can go to my email address at contact at Rainy Howard, and I'll add you to the seven day vision board challenge. Um, and then, yeah, so join, also subscribe to my YouTube page. I need you guys to subscribe because I'm going to probably be posting some videos outside of Miraculous Moments. And I want, I don't want you to miss the videos that I'll be, I'll be posting. So join my email list at rainyspeaks.com. And there's a link in the YouTube, um, below this YouTube video, rainyspeaks.com. Find me on Facebook and Instagram at Rainy Howard. And I'm going to just quickly close. Father God, as we close, we thank you for the divine wisdom and revelation. Continue to lead us and guide us on the way to go, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for your word that says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, present your request to God. God, we will come to you in prayer and thanksgiving, and we are looking forward to the great and mighty things you are getting ready to do in our life through the vision and the word that you have given us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm super excited about our miraculous moments that we share and that we'll continue to share. Um, be blessed. I love you. And um, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. Be blessed.